Hello, I am Erin Bradley. I teach at Brian Evan Primary School. This is a school in Bryanston, a suburb of Johannesburg, South Africa. So these videos also provide a resource to build upon, if not on a more expansive basis for other schools. A big welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at movement. I'm also going to show you how to bring a Giphy file, a GIF file into Scratch to use as a sprite. So I will be looking for an online converter. That means a file can be converted from a video into a GIF file. And the GIF file is the most suitable file to bring into your Scratch program. When you go onto the internet, you'll see there's a whole lot of different websites that allow you to convert a video file into a GIF. And you can see here I've opened up Google and you can see there's Animated GIF Maker and Free Online Animate GIF Maker. I'm just going to use one of these online websites to convert my video to GIF. Okay, and here's my YouTube. So I'm just looking for a file, I'm trying to find a file with Milad. Is one of the youngsters in our coding group. We're going to see if we can put him into our Scratch program. So I've got to just find that file. It's important that when you save a file, that you open it up for sharing, an unlisted file, because if it's private, it won't be accessible. And you need to find that that file can be accessed to convert it to a GIF file. I just uploaded the file that I'm looking for from my cell phone. The file with Milad has been saved in what's called Family and Friends. It's just a personal folder that I use. So I'm just uploading it. You can see Family and Friends. And on the right-hand side, that's Milad's video. So I'm just going to see. And we've just got a very s pulling a face and moving over like that. So you can see that's where it is. Oh, he's really looking good. That'll go well in a, as a backdrop in our Scratch program. That would be most suitable. So we're going to go back to our website and we're going to look for an appropriate GIF converter. Remember the file that I am being using is an MP4, it's a video format, and I need to make it into a GIF file to make it easily accessible to Scratch. I want to use every different frame in Milad's video as a costume and show those movements to give the animating effect through that. This site is showing that I need to sign in and I don't really want to have to sign in and go through all of that to make a GIF file. So I'm going to look for another one. I'm just glancing through it and it says make your video in minutes. But there does seem to be a signing in process. So let's see if we can find something a bit different. It's not exactly what I wanted. So let's have a look and see if we can find something more suitable. And here it says enter your YouTube. Okay, so let's just close this. And I'm going to move a little bit down. And here it says YouTube to GIF. That's the one I'm looking for. YouTube to GIF. I won't need to sign in. We'll go through all of that. And it's as easy as pasting the URL, the address of this file in. And it should work. I'm right clicking on the video. Right clicking, copy video URL and that's the address of the URL the address of that file and I'm going to put that into here as paste as text and then I'm going to load the YouTube video here's just another way of getting the URL of that file you can see it says over there that I could just take that and Milad's file would be then captured I've got to change it to unlisted so that I have access to the file. So you must make sure it's unlisted and that should allow you to copy the file into the video, the Giphy converter, the GIF converter. And you can see everything seems to be in place here. And over here, that's the URL. I'm just going to copy that. Go to my GIF converter, put it into the converter and that's the address of the file. I'm just going to load it up. And it's loading up. And it's working. And now to choose how long the GIF would be. 
you have to select how long it can be and it says here yeah, 0.3 seconds so three seconds is how long we can take a gif out of it so i'm going to put in a three there because we can only take a gif of three seconds long and we can see the gif is there now we're going to create it and you can see it's now converting that into a gif i want to save it to a disk because i eventually want to put it on my desktop save to disk and there we go and it's now going to be possibly i can save it on my desktop see it's just loading it'll probably just show me an oh there we go there's milad and it's showing me it as a gif file i can see it's in my picture section of the computer we do have a gif file that we can use and now i just want to put it onto my computer i'm going to go to this this the sharing and that should give me some way of doing that so i'm going to go and have a look it says save as let's save as and that should provide me with access to save it in my desktop i'm just going to have a look yes and we can give it a name i'll call it milad and i'm just going to save it to my desktop there we go and now it's just a matter of bringing it into our scratch game so here we have scratch i've opened it up and i'm going to bring that gif file of milad into my scratch game we have a converted gif file on our desktop to bring in and use as a background and a sprite in our scratch project when you start scratch you'll find that this is the sprite you'll see the scratch cat by default our sprite is the scratch cat and we want to replace it with the gif file that we've made the gif file showing milad pulling funny faces to get rid of the default sprite we just click on that little blue icon the blue, blue cross and i'm going to go to backdrops and there's the sprites and i'm going to bring in a new sprite which is going to be milad so oh no so this isn't the right place to be i go down there and it says upload there's the upload and you can see straight away i've moved into the downloads folder and there's a giphy file it's not called milad but it's showing the giphy file so if you want to find that you're going to go to the upload that's it this little part of it and you're going to click on the file and it's importing it's bringing it into our scratch project or our scratch file importing brings bringing it in and you can already see there it is on the stage you can see milad and i want to show you the costumes that go with this because you can start seeing how that changes and gives the animating effect in scratch interesting that it, with a gif file each frame of the gif file is a different costume i would like you to be able to see that so we go to costumes and if i click there you can see that's the first costume clicking the second one you can see each of the frames showing how milad moves you can see each frame gives the animated effect each one of them is a costume you'll have to look at that very carefully can you see why a gif file is so useful so let's bring in some coding now so i'm going to bring in a waiting of one second we're going to just make that far more perceptive that you can see it a lot easier and i'm going to bring in a event an event so we're going to go with the click flag event we know that would be the yellow blocks because the yellow blocks are the events blocks i want to have a one second duration before we show the next frame before we see the next pulled face of milad and so i'm going to be using a loop in this bit of code so we'll just look for a control called the forever loop there it is bring it in and that's going to run through block by block and within every second i'm going to move from costume to costume i'm going to move through each picture frame of milad pulling his face it'll go through the first costume to the next one and you can see i've just brought in the purple next costume and that will show the next frame in the sequence of frames of the gif file the first instruction calls a one second wait and then it goes on to the next frame next costume and it'll go through that so let's just know that we're going to click that on the click flag event click on it and there's a one second between every change in this picture and you can see milad's pulling his face and it's a one second change it's a little slow so we can speed that up and i'm going to change that to a quarter of a second and you might not know but 
a quarter of a second would be 0 0.25. I've put 10.25, so it's going to get rid of that one, and that should be a lot faster. And let's have a good look at this. So if I click on the green flag, the event goes, and that looks a lot faster. You can see every quarter of a second, Milad is pulling a face. Each costume is being shown consecutively. The first costume, the second costume, and it goes through the whole list of costumes. It is a lot better now. And that's how we're going to minimize it, take it down. And I'm going to make him say something. So we'll have that Milad pulls this funny face, the next face shows, and then he will say, I am Milad. And this is just giving you some understanding of how we could use that GIF file. So we go on click flag, and you can see after 0 0.25 seconds, the code starts triggering. I don't see it saying anything, but now it, now it is. You can see the speech bubble's a little bit off. It shouldn't be quite as far out as that. One of the learners asked if I could just show how to bring in speech. That would be text to speech. So I'm going to do that. You go to the extensions part down there, and you can see here it says speak. So you can choose your languages, and there's a whole lot of, I'm just going to choose a squeaky voice and bring that in, speak, and we can just type in what we want Milad to say. And obviously it might have an inappropriate voice. I love monsters. 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 It's just repeating that as it loops through the forever loop. Waits a quarter of a second. Then it says the next frame. And then it will say I love monsters continually. And here we have just saying I am Milad. You should have some understanding of how to bring in this, this speech aspect now. You can play around with the picture with your sprites and try and make it more suitable. So I'm just going to zoom in like that so you can see it a bit better. And you can see you can play around with different areas of it. So I'm going to go with the eraser tool and I'm just making a part of it see through. So if I had to bring in a backdrop, you would see that Milad is superimposed or you'll see him with the background behind him. This gray and white block are showing transparency. You can see through that sprite in that area that I'm showing you now. Just made that a bit smaller. I just want to do it very roughly. Okay, and that should do everything there. I'm not going to work through all the other costumes, but I just wanted you to understand how that fits with a backdrop. So we're going to look for a backdrop now. So we're going to scroll to the right, and you get your backdrops through there. So let's look for an appropriate backdrop. Click on this. And I'm just going to choose any one. I'm not going to be too particular about it. And you can see it see-through. There's a transparency. You can see right through. And this desert scene, you've got Milad in the front with a desert scene at the back. This should give you some understanding of how to use that. And you can see the other costumes or the next frames are just non-see-through. So you, it's quite a process to make sure that they are ready so you can see through them. Now, uh, Milad is speaking. And you can see when it gets to the frame that is transparent, you suddenly get the see-through effect. And it's just for a second, a quarter of a second, that you see that. You can see that GIF files are really, really interesting. Let's start a new project. So we're going to start with our default Scratch Cat again, our default Sprite. And I'd like to just hone in on some of the other aspects that I said I would mention. I did mention that we do a little bit more on movement. I'd like, to, I'd like to superimpose that backdrop of Milad as a backdrop now. So we're going to bring it in as a backdrop. So you can see I've gone to the backdrop section. I'm uploading. And you can see now Scratch Cat is in front of Milad. So Milad is in the background as a backdrop. And you'll see that each one of those costumes that I mentioned, in him being a sprite, would now be a different backdrop part of the backdrops section. So we can have a look at that in a minute. But I'm going to first of all bring in a click flag event on the sprite. We're going to do very much what we did in the previous example. We're going to bring in a consecutive change of the backdrops. We'll also bring in a one second duration that is going to be bound within a forever loop. I'm going to go to the backdrop section by clicking there. 
and just go back and I'm clicking on the icon of Milad and that GIF file is now active and you can see I can use the code to link up to the backdrop. It's not showing the sprite. So I'm bringing in a click flag event and I'm going to do some code here in the code section that links up with the backdrop. And we'll bring in a forever loop and we'll do pretty much what we did previously though linking up with the backdrop. The forever loop will read the blocks of code consecutively from the top to the bottom. So let's bring that in the forever loop. When clicking on the flag, we're going to play the bits of code in between here and we're going to look for each backdrop, each part, different part of those sequence of faces that Milad is making. So I'm going to look for the purple blocks and we're going to have, and this one over here we could switch to the backdrop that we designate, we could indicate which one, but I'm going to choose the next backdrop. So it'll just take the next backdrop in the whole list. It'll choose the first one, then it'll go to the second one, and it'll go to each item in that list, and it'll show them. It starts off with a blank one, but you can see here we have Milad in that one second difference between each frame. But now he is no longer a sprite, but he is now taking the position as a backdrop. And Sprite Cat the scratch cat in front. Each frame of the GIF file is now a different backdrop sequence. There's a whole sequence of different files or frames that are going to be played, as you can see. I just wanted to show you how to bring in sound. So if you scroll down, you'll see that the sound are these pink ones. And there's an ask if you wanted someone to give in some information. We've showed that in some of our previous tutorials. So we're going to bring in a sound file, and let's just see how that looks. The sound would be these pink ones, just below the that one. And you can see here we're bringing in a play sound, a popping sound. So let's see what that sounds like. You can even record your own voice in this part. I'm actually recording on my computer. It's not set for my it's actually set to record on my computer, so you'd find that the popping sounds would come through. But you must just play around with this, and you'll see there's lots of things that one can do by recording your own sounds and even going out and listening to sounds in nature and bringing that into your Scratch projects. Joshua asked some questions about movement, so I'd just like to focus on that for a moment, and we'll bring in a different sprite to show movement and I thought we could choose a tennis ball as we did in our last tutorial and we'll have that moving around on the screen so we're going to click on sprite and you can see if I go to sports I should find a tennis ball there we go and we have brought that in as a sprite and you can see by default it's placed over there that would have coordinates on the X and Y axes and I dealt with that in my previous tutorial I'd ask some of you to go and watch that. And that's the x-axis, and going up and down would be the y-axis. x-axis. x-axis across, y is going down. You can see that my tennis board is activated in the sprite section, and now I'm going to bring in code that will activate it, and we're going to have it moving around on the stage area. So we bring, bring in a trigger, a click flag event, and we do want our game to be realistic and that's part of the user's experience to have this feeling of it's kind of realistic so we'll use the glide movement so we can look in the blue box blocks and we're going to bring in a glide and it gives by default one second to move to a random position now we all know that that random position is a position on the x and y axis axes and that is chosen by our computer we're going to bring in a forever loop so that we'll have this glide within that period of time, the random position within a forever loop. So every three seconds, we will redirect this tennis ball to be floating all around the stage area. And now we're going to bring in an if, a condition, if it is touching the edge. And we could do this just to show you, but we could also use the bounce. We'll bounce off the edge, which 
is also useful. And we could bring in some code in this if statement. If it hits on the edge, do something. It could change angles or it could disappear and lots of things could happen. So if I said if, and this is the alternative that I mentioned, if on edge bounce, I just want to get rid of that. But if on the edge, this is an also an if statement, but it's just in one single block. If the tennis ball hits the edge, it will bounce. So it'll have that realistic bounce effect. It'll move and change direction over after a certain period of time. And if it hits the edge, it'll bounce. Did you see that? That was a bounce. And it bounces again. And it gives that realistic aspect to the moving tennis ball. You could play around with the timing here. And it would change it quite substantially. You can see it's going a lot faster as I bring the time down. So it will glide to a different position within a short period of time. And that means it speeds up and slows down as we move on. And here I'm just showing you that we could have used if touching on Sprite. So if it, if the tennis ball touched against our scratch cat and then something could happen. So I'm just going to drag that bit in, in over there. That's duplicate that bit of code and we could have that it changes to a different a different position. So every time the tennis ball is touching against Scratch Cat, it will change and choose a new random position. It will move in a different direction. And that's what's happening here. You guys, it should give you some understanding of movement. And there you've got Milad in the background pulling his faces continually. I just want to get it that whenever that tennis ball touches against the sprite, the it will redirect itself, move in a different direction. So you can see if I move the if part, the if condition, this block it, and I move it up. See what happens if we put it over there. So you can see every time it touches the scratch cat, it will change direction in a new chosen direction of the computer. The computer will choose. It's not too clear about how that's happening, but should be happening that every time it hits the scratch cat it would redirect and move in a, in an, a different direction there we go you can see it does does work it's not that clear to see you'll need to experiment a lot more to get to know what to do within scratch you've got to know the blocks you've got to play around in the code more so than that one would spend just playing the game and slowly but surely build an understanding which allows you to start making games and start making interesting programs. It does take time and it does take a lot of experience to build games. That's all for now. I'd just like to thank you for watching this video. Please do subscribe.